Hey folks, welcome to the bench. I have not posted a video in a little while because quite frankly I've been working on a lot of pro audio stuff and it doesn't really fit this channel but I thought I would post this. It does fit into the pro audio category but it's an interesting little device. It's uh, Aviom A16 II. It's a personal mixer. Uh, any of you folks that are musicians or work with musicians or do sound are probably pretty familiar with these. What this does is this allows a musician to plug a headphone into the back side of the unit and then you can control your own mix for 16 channels inside of your headphones and for each one of the channels you can control your volume I'm sorry your uh, your pan stereo left and right and also your volume control and you have three global controls for bass for treble and then also master volume and the problem with this and the reason it's here is this rotary controller for the sorry rotary controller for the volume is kind of messed up and as I'm turning it down right now you can see it jumping around it's kind of wonky this is pretty typical for these. Uh, this happens over time. Uh, this thing was manufactured in 2007, I believe. So it's been around for a while. It's gone through a lot of use. It gets bounced around a lot. And these encoders just wear out. So we need to replace that. Other things that typically go wrong with these are the headphone jack. Um, not so much this because they run off of PoE, which is power over internet. So if you have an ethernet cable plugged in from the Aviom switch, it supplies power to the unit. So this doesn't get used very often. But these also go bad as well. So I've been in this unit re before. I've replaced one of the Ethernet jacks. I've also replaced the headphone jack. And now it's time to replace this volume control. So I just thought I'd go through this with you and show you how I do this. So let's flip this thing over and take the cover off. So in preparation of removing the cover, I've removed all the knobs off the top side. Uh, you flip it over to the bottom side and you've got a total of nine screws to take out. There's also one that's going to be hiding underneath this QA sticker. As you can see, I've already violated that uh, QE sticker. So this was checked in 07. So it's been around for a little while. So when you pull this back cover off, then you'll have access to the circuit board. When you take the circuit board out, there's a whole series of little push button switches that align with these buttons here. Uh, they have little clips that kind of hang on to these buttons. So as you take it out, you have to kind of carefully lift the board out to disconnect these switches, or I'm sorry, these plastic buttons from the switches that are inside of the unit. And I'll try to show that to you here in a minute. But you do want to be careful about that. You also want to be careful when you're putting these buttons back. You can see these have two LED lights on each one. Uh, this one has a light. This one has no light, this one has one light, and this one has one light. So if you mix these buttons up, you could have a blank here and one with two lights here, and it's not going to look right. So just be careful when you're putting these back together. Okay, got the back cover off, so I'm going to take my screwdriver here, and I'm just going to gently pry the edge here a little bit. I um, don't know if I could do this one-handed. I'm going to give it a shot. Okay, so you can hear it releasing from the buttons. And I'll take get my hand in here and just kind of help it along the rest of the way. All right, so now I got that side. I'll switch hands, and I'll get this other side here. <laughs> Sorry, I got you out of the shot there for a second. All right, we'll try to gently just give it a little little tickle there. Try to get it up. Okay, so I think we pretty much got them all released should be able to lift this out by hand but maybe not okay let me remove it with both hands and I'll get right back to you so I was able to get both hands on the board and, and get it out pretty easily just had to lift it out but uh, took two hands like I said so here's the top side of the board and these are the buttons that come out okay so you've got a plastic button here which looks like this and on the bottom side, see if we can get this in focus a little bit. Let's try it this way. There we go. Yeah, if you see that little square part right there, that's where the top of this push button fits into the switch. And that's how the switch kind of hangs on and stays in place on the chassis of the mixing console. So here's the problem. The more times you take this off, you run the risk of this right here. So you can see... This is actually the top side of this button, which got pulled out of the board because uh, it, it hung on. And so I'm going to have to replace this. Fortunately, we've got a few of these in stock. So I'll go ahead and just pop a new one in there. But uh, 
that's part of the risk of taking these apart multiple times is uh, you should have a bunch of these little push buttons on hand. And you can get parts for these on full compass. They carry all the parts. Well, I wouldn't say all the parts, but all the common parts that go bad, like this jack. This DC jack, they also carry the Ethernet ports, uh, they carry the encoders, they carry the pots, and they also carry these little buttons here as well. And they carry the individual plastic buttons, should you lose one, and they also carry the knobs as well. So you can get all the parts for these things, the common parts that fail on these, on uh, newcompass.com. You can check them out. Okay, so... What we got to do is we've got to replace this rotary encoder. I've got a new one here. So there's one, two, I think three to four legs here. And then you have two ground lugs on either side. There's a couple of different ways that you can take this out. Uh, what I've done traditionally before I got a desoldering gun was I would take my diagonal cutters. I'd just snip, 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 snip. And then I would take my soldering iron on the other side and I put some, apply some pressure to the side of this while I'm heating it up and lift up the one side and then I do that to the other side and then I would take the holes later on with my solder removal my manual solder removal tool clean the holes out and put the new device in there uh, I since have purchased a desoldering gun so I'm probably going to use that when I replace that but either method will work so let's go to about uh, replacing this guy okay so real quick the way I'm going to remove this push button thing is I have um, this little metal tool right here with a sharp end on it. And I'm going to take and place that underneath this leg right here. And then I'm going to heat up that pad with my soldering iron. I'm going to pry at the same time with this little metal piece. I'll do that for this leg, for this leg, and the other two legs on the other side. And that's how I'm going to remove this uh, little push button thing here. Okay, old switch is out. New switch is ready, and there's all the holes that are have been cleared out. Do you have a look on the other side here? So you got uh, one, two, three legs, and then you got your two ground connectors right there. Um, also, I have replaced the uh, push button switch on this side, and it's kind of nice. I didn't glue this cap down. I was able to move it right out of the way so I could get access to the switch. So everything's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and install the new switch and solder it in, and uh, we should be ready to test it. Also, a little top tip here, I always use a liquid flux, when I, especially when I'm soldering on multi-sided boards here. And uh, let's see, uh, you can see it installed right there. Just, just a little dab will do you. And that just makes the solder adhere better because it cleans, the acid in the flux cleans all the soldering surfaces. To make sure that you good, get good adhesion of the solder. And uh, we'll just make the connection last longer, look cleaner. Now, this is not a non-cleanable or water soluble type of solder this is the old school stuff that's kind of like tree sap and uh, you need like a, a little brush a little acid brush like this with the hairs cut off and i've got some alcohol here my little my little menda dispenser i've got some alcohol here and i'll just use that to clean off the board and it gives you professional results at the end so just want to point that out all right so it's all done i got the new Rotary controller in there, so give it a quick test. Up and down, no jumping around, so everything looks good. Let's button this thing up and I'll give it one last test before we're done. All buttoned up now, everything looks great. Volume control is working like it should. Balance control looks good, love it. Each one of these push button switches, they're all working. This is one that I repaired, so let's see, we'll whack it. There we go, we can see the trim coming on. So we know that button works as well. So this thing's all set and ready to go. So if you guys ever come across these little Avion units and this thing starts going wonky, now you'll know what to do. You might say to yourself, what kind of shop works on this stuff? Well, you know what? You can fix it yourself. So again, hopefully you enjoyed this video and we'll see you back for the next one. Uh, I promise I've got some vintage audio stuff coming. Uh, give me a little idea here. Uh, my shelf is quite crowded with things that I need to work on. So, like I say, it's coming soon. I've just been doing a lot of pro audio stuff recently, but I've got some, I got some cool stuff coming, so stay tuned. All right, guys, take care.